Tell me, how, how many of you understand all the laws of life? Hello? Do you understand all the laws of life? Do you understand all the laws of sowing and reaping? Of sowing and reaping. Do you understand all the laws of sowing and reaping? Not necessarily all the laws, but you understand the laws of sowing and reaping. Okay. You'll understand some of them. <laughs> okay, let's read Matthew 13, verse 3 to 9. It should be on screen. There we go. I think we need to just tweak this thing after the service, eh, guys? Here we go. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, him being Jesus, okay? Then he being Jesus, says the following. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the same sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop. 160 or 30 times what was sown. Then it says, he who has an ear, let him hear. Who of you have an ear? Who of you have an ear to hear? Did you hear what the scripture says? My first point, sowing seed without nurturing the seed will result in the seed dying. Hello? If you do not nurture the seed you plant, it will eventually die. There was once upon a time this gentleman, and he goes into this nursery, and he said, um, Ma'am, do you have a miniature palm? So she says, I'm terribly sorry it's sold out. So he said, Please, man, I need a miniature palm in a black pot, please. So he said, Can I perhaps entice you with a fern? Because they all sold out. So he said, no, I need a miniature palm. So she says, but why a miniature palm? She says, because my wife went away and she said, please make sure that you water this miniature palm. And she's coming back, back today. <laughs> Hello, did you get it? If you don't take care of it, it eventually will. If you don't water it and give it what it needs, it will eventually... That's a principle that I think many people do not understand and realize. And you say, oh, obvious. Oh, is it? I've seen that's not obvious in reality. Many times we do not take care of the very things we have, and eventually they are taken from us, and we say, why? How come? Many times you have plants in your home and you don't water them at the appropriate time and they... I, we had a beautiful orchid in our, in our bathroom that I think Anshin was given and um, I went and got his head, saw this, um, what do you call it, nutrient, nutrients for orchids. So... Uh, Instead of diluting it, I just took some and chucked a little bit in. Guess what happened to the orchid? Why? I was being overkind to it. Dead, dead, dead. Very quickly. I'm still living because she loves me more than the plant, thank goodness. I don't know why, but yeah, I'm still... <laughs> Do you understand if we do not give the seed that we plant the correct amount of nutrients and care that it needs, it will eventually die. 
that is a principle that goes right across the board with everything in life. And I'm not just talking now about plants. I'm talking about your spiritual walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. If that which is begun within you, if you do not water it, if you do not take care of it, guess what? It will eventually, if you never read God's word, if you never go to church, guess what? You will eventually stop serving God. If you tell your children about the Lord Jesus Christ, and you don't continuously do it at every opportunity. You say, wow, thank you God for this. Wow, look what God produced there. Look what he's done there. Guess what? They will eventually not believe in God. I guarantee you. And I know people hate it when I say that. But it's the truth. So sowing seed without nurturing the seed will result in the seed dying, period. No matter what it is. What, no matter whether it's a spiritual seed Physical or a financial seed. Okay? Number two. Sowing a specific seed will result in you harvesting that specific crop. Hello? How many of you believe that if you plant tomato seeds today, in a hundred days' time, you're going to reap watermelons? How many of you believe that's going to happen? Hello? Hello? I think many people believe that in reality. Or am I wrong? I've seen many people, they sow hatred and ugliness and vengeance and discord, but all they want to receive is love. And when they don't receive love, then they wonder, why is this? How come? This is a principle, but yet in Reality, we violate it so often. For those of you that are, are unaware of what goes around in the world, I presume some of you are a little bit more informed than others. Do you know that Israel was bombed yesterday? Okay. Who didn't know? You see, some of you don't know. But they were attacked yesterday by Hamas, because of, and it was to the day 50 years ago where they were pri attacked prior but it was done on the Sabbath day of rest. And they were attacked without provocation or anything. So, But you see, if you are attacked without provocation, without what ha ends up happening, what do you get back? Love and kindness and kuchiku, kuch what do you get back? If you sow murder, what do you get back? Murder. And this is what's happening. Many people have died on both sides. Hundreds, yeah, hundreds. The most in, yeah, many, many years. Very sad, tragic, but these are the days that we're living. And it's so sad, instead of the world, the global leaders, investing in il il alleviating and eradicating poverty and bringing unity, what do they do? They invest in bombs and weapons. For what? For war, for discord. It is... Doesn't make sense, but that is the signs that we're living. So, if you sow a specific seed, you must know you're going to reap that specific seed harvest. You cannot plant tomatoes and expect watermelons. It just does not work. Okay? That is quite obvious. Galatians 6 verse 7 says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. If you sow kindness, you're going to reap kindness. If you never sow anything, you will never ever harvest anything. And many people think, but how come do I not receive this in my life? Well, did you sow anything in that regard? You will not receive anything in that regard unless you sow. And it is a principle that we need to get a grip of and say, but okay, I'm not receiving. Have I been sowing in this area? Well, obviously not. And if I have been sowing and not been a harvest, then I need to reassess what's going on. 
and then go before the Lord and say, what is the problem here? If you're not happy with the seed, you better change the seed you're sowing. If you're not happy with the harvest you receiving or harvesting, you need to change the seed that you sow. Number three, sowing seed does not always guarantee that you will have a harvest or a crop. Do you know that? Who of you believe that if you sow something, you have to receive something back? Who of you? If you don't look after it, there's a principle. If you don't take care of it, you won't. What? Could be a flood, could be drought. What other, what other reasons is this principle true? And this is the problem. Many of us think, well, I sowed this, therefore I should harvest this. In other words, slot machine philosophy. I gave this to God, chuk, chuk, he must give this back to me. And many, many, many Christians in the world today believe that nonsense. And it is a heretical teaching and should not be taught in the church. Because it's not a principle. Okay? You cannot, if you do not hone into the principle and lock into that, you're out of line. If it's a principle that is violated, it's not going to work. How come sometimes you plant, but you never harvest? There are many, many, many reasons. Who can give me some? Not looking after it. Eh? Not nurturing it. What else? Let's see. No fertile soil. Like what? Rain, hail, storms, yes. What else? Pest, uh, what do you call it? Animals going in and destroying your crop. Okay, what else? You didn't smile when you planted them. You, <laughs> you, when I was in agricultural college, I didn't like tobacco, okay? So I was not a very fond individual. I didn't enjoy tobacco, so I would plant the things upside down which obviously is going to produce what? Nothing. Nothing. Okay? If you plant the roots outside the soil, it's not going to... How many of you have planted, taken seed and just thrown, scattered them? Who of you have done that? Where do some of them land? Some land where? In the bird's tummy. In the olden days, where would they, they would just throw, right? And some would fall on rocky ground. Some would fall on the path, concrete. If you sow on concrete, you will pre you, what kind of crop are you going to get back? Zico. That is why when we, even with a sermon like this, unless your, the soil of your heart is open and receptive, you're going to walk out there and re receive nothing. That's why I believe it's imperative that when you walk in that door, you say, Lord, prepare the soil of my heart that I may receive what you, not what Ian wants me, what you are wanting to impart into my spiritual being today. Amen? Otherwise, it, it becomes an exercise in futility. You come here and you sing a song. In other words, you don't even worship. You just come, sing a song, and off you go. I think your time can be better used. So, that's why God said to me the once, he said, either serve me with everything or don't serve me. I'm not interested in a lukewarm, half-hearted relationship with you. And he says that actually to all of us, just by the way. See, just because you sow does not guarantee a harvest. If you do not plant your seed in good soil, not in soil that concrete or the path where it's hard or it's full of rocks or even if it's full of weeds or where there's animals that will come and destroy it you ain't getting a crop hello that is a principle that we need to understand and if we do not understand that we will sow seed and we will never, ever receive a harvest unless it is in the right fertile soil. 
unless we take pre protective mechanism to protect the crop. And you can go on and on, which we will do just now. Number four, sowing more seed will not speed up the growth process of a crop. Did you know that? Just because you sow a thousand seeds doesn't mean that it's going to come up a thousand times quicker. Old Warren Buffett once said that uh, just if you sleep with nine women, do not think, well, you're going to get a baby after one month. And all of us think, oh, duh, of course. Well, how come in, in reality we so often think that way? That just because I did this, I must get a return just like that. The principle is when you sleep with a woman, nine months later comes the child. You cannot speed it up. I remember my wife quite a while back few years back, um, she was wanting to grow tomatoes and she, she grew them inside the house and uh, she grew these GMO seeds and chop, they came up 100% and then she had heirloom ones which were different colors and all of that and she planted them and she became very upset because these things, things didn't germinate. So she became more and more despondent. I said, chill out, they will come. Just give it time. Next day, me, me, me. And eventually three came up and then she got a little bit excited, but only a little bit excited. Why? Because she wanted this beautiful little germination. And eventually what happened? They came. But these were heirloom seeds, seeds, seeds and not GMO seeds. So they took a little bit longer. But the problem is sometimes we're impatient and think, God, you need to do this in, in my life now. And if you don't, I'm going to till the soil and just start again. How many times do we do that in life? We become impatient. And what do we end up doing? Just before that germination takes place, we go and we till the soil and we kill the seed. I've seen that many a time in people's lives in reality. Who of you know the Madagascar palm? I think there might only be one person here, and that's badly. It's called a Tahina Spectra bilis, bilius. Is that how you say it? Watch this. That, that, that is a small, young uh, Madagascar palm. I don't know how many years old that is. But do you know that it lives for a hundred years? One hundred years before it produces one fruit. One seed. It then produces a seed on the next slide. There it is. Look how massive that thing is. And once it's produced the seeds after one hundred years, guess what it does? It dies. <laughs> hundred years. Who of you are willing to wait a hundred years for a seed to come up? Two more years, eh? <laughs> Sometimes different seeds we plant take different... And you know what? Sometimes you will plant a seed and you will not reap the reward of that seed that you planted. Someone else will. But most people are not willing to plant the seed that someone else will harvest. Hello? In Africa, that's very much a truth. Unless I am reaping the reward, I ain't planting the seed. What harvest are you wanting to reap in your life. Le let's talk monetary wise. What harvest are you wanting to reap in your financial life? What have you shown? What do you think, how do you think it can come out? 
you need to look at all of that in your spiritual life. What are you wanting to see come about? What are you sowing? And you need to go home and you need to question and say, Lord, this is what I'm wanting. I need to ask you, how do I get this crop in my life? What do I need to plant? How do I need to plant it? How do I need to take care of it? How do I need to nurture it? What do I, how do I need to protect it so that I can get the harvest that I want? And you need to do it in every area of your life. I remember doing Bible study with my children. And we would pray with them. Nearly e we'd pray with them every single night. Sometimes unless they fell asleep and we, we were out or whatever. But most nights we would read the word to them and pray with them. And tell them every day, I love you. Every single day of my life. You can call them here now. Where they? they w and then you ask them. I showed years, not no, I said da showed days and weeks and months and years into their lives. And now they are young men. And I've pulled back because they need to come to the point where they themselves choose to read the Word of God. Where they choose themselves to love and serve God. But if you're faithful in sowing the seed you will eventually reap the harvest that you so desire. And I praise God that my children love and serve God. All my kids, young men now. But if you do, do not sow in intentionally what you're wanting to r reap one day, you ain't going to reap it. That is a principle. And you need to say, but how come am I not reaping what I want? Well, maybe you didn't sow. Number five. Sowing the same seed in different soil has different results. Just by the way. Matthew 13, verse 18 to 23, Jesus speaking, he says here, and he's talking about this parable, and he says, listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When someone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. And I pray you young men, your this seed that is sown is not being sown on a path, but on fertile soil. Then it carries on, verse 20. The one who receives the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word, so like now you're hearing it, and at once receives it with joy. Yeah, that's good. Okay? But since he does not ha but since it has no root, he he lost only, sorry, but since, he has no, but since he has no root, he lost only a short time. When the trouble or persecution comes because of the, because of the, wor the word, he quickly, he quickly falls away. And this is the tragedy of today's age that we live in. So often issues of life just steal and we, the, the social media of our day steals what God places in our lives. And you need to make sure that you receive the word and intentionally live it out in your life, or this is what will happen. Then it carries on. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. The deceitfulness of? Money, chasing money. And many people chase money, but they don't chase God. But the one who receives the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, and thirty times what was sown. 
Now, why is it that some produce 100, others 60, and others only 30? Why? Different types of soil, different, different types of nurturing, different type of taking care of it. I was, I was given um, some Evo seedlings, and it's, it's a very good rootstock, well, so they say, but you have to graft it to what you want. This, this rootstock was a reed rootstock, but I had to graft it to whatever I wanted, has or whatever, okay? So I, we grafted these. Now, me, I was informed you better allow someone that knows what they're doing. And this is the price to get a graft, and I couldn't afford it. So I said, no, no, I'll train my own guys, which I did. I did go to agricultural college, so I trained them. And now some of them are this high now, okay? Looking lovely. Now I have to plant them, but I don't have 250 or half a million to prepare the land. And obviously, if you have tilled, well-prepared land, what do you have? A better tree. A better end-time harvest. That is obvious. But you need to understand and grasp this principle that you, you need to do the best you can with what you have. Hello? Yo, yeah, but I don't have what they have. Suck it up. Do the best that you have with what you have. And give glory to God. So what I've done is dug a 500 by 500 hole. Okay? Which is more than what I was informed to. I was told to do it 300 by 300. Just get it in the ground. Okay? So I've dug a 500 by 500 hole. That is as best as I can. Just get it in the ground. Now, you should also have what proper irrigation, right? I can't afford that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to water it with a bucket. And this is what I was in told. He, the person told me, you're then going to have to do it by hand. Just make sure you do it at least four times a year because we live in a high rainfall area. So as long as you do it four times, it'll live. Can you believe it? And this person is a very uh, informed, great farmer when it comes to Evers. He's a very successful Evo farmer. He said that is how he began. But the problem is we want to begin at the top and not begin here. Start with what you have and do the best with what you have. What's another thing I can do once I've planted it? Is to put mulching around it so that it doesn't dry out. Okay? Which means it needs 40% less water. Okay? So I will put mulching around it. That'll help. There are many things that you can do additionally. You can fertilize it. You can do all these fancy things. You can spray the leaves. And, and obviously, if you give it what it needs at the appropriate time, proper measures at the proper time, it'll do better. That is life. It'll give you back. But the problem is, if you do not have the resources, then you can't do it. But you do what you have with what you have. And that is what I want to encourage you. Do not look at that guy and what he has. You look what God has put in your hand and you be faithful with that. Another thing he said to me, is, he says, if you do not fence it in, do not even begin. I said, what? He said he once planted avos and he lost 2,000 in one night from buck eating the leaves. And he says, once that's happened, you may as well replace them. 2,000 trees. That's quite a few trees. Hey? So, and that's what Hendrik said, is you need to protect it from pests, whether those pests be buck or monkeys or cattle or whatever the case may be. There, there are so many different things that we need to put in place to protect the crop that we have planted. 
What about the seed that you've sown in your children's life? Do you put protective measures in their lives? Take away the cell phones at certain times or restrict them from these things or those things? Or do you just let them run amok? And we need to question ourselves in all areas if we are wanting to reap a specific harvest. And the more you can put in, the better it's going to be your crop. If you've done it wisely, okay? Not overdose, okay? Don't overdose the orchid. So, let's have a look at the seed that is sown is the word of God. So, th the Bible spoke of compacted soil or on concrete. If you throw it, what happens? Look what it says there. There's no germination. Obviously, it's, there's, it's not going to take root. That's not rocket science. Then the person didn't understand what you were saying. Okay? The devil snatches it away. In other words, the very birds come and eat it up. Okay? It is destroyed and the word is lost. Then you get rocky soil, where you have soil but it's full of rocks. Okay? Small, small, small roots, it, it germinates, but because there's not enough soil, it eventually just falls away. The recipient listens, falls away quickly, and then the plant comes up, withers, and dies. And that is not very exciting. If for those of you that look after trees, you understand what I'm saying. I mean, I, with the, some of those avos, I would say, but we grafted this, and it's, and then suddenly the, tr the, the, it just, it shoots, and then it withers, and it dies. And then I said to the guy, what the heck? So he said, because the graph union was not, didn't take well. So the bud would sprout it, but because there was not a good union, it just eventually died. Now obviously your root's still there, but so you can, you've got one more time that you can graft it or it dies. So just very interesting things there. So it withered away and then is lost. Then you get weedy soil. In other words, we have a lot of weeds in social media. Be careful what you allow your kids to listen to on social media, on TV, etc. Okay? That is weedy soil, let me tell you. It takes roots, the recipient hears, and then the issues choke and suffocate. The issues of life and the lies of Satan and the deception that comes with it suffocate it. And then they're unfruitful and then they're lost to Satan. That is what's actually being said there. However, good soil, the roots flourish, they understand, and they yield a crop. And please note, they yield a crop a hundred, some a hundred, some sixty, some thirty. They're fruitful. And obviously, spiritually wise, they are saved. Now, how come is it that some are way more productive than others. Why? Let, let's, take, let's take with a, a crop now. Why? Right, right soil, right water, right fertilizer, fertigation, right nutrients. What else? The best variety of rootstock, the right climate, if you plant an ever tree in snow, what's going to happen? Okay. Th there are so many factors, and we need to understand these factors. Let's talk on the spiritual side. Who of you wished you knew more of the Word of God than what you do right now? Ooh. Why don't you? Don't read often enough. Come on, what else? Let's be honest. Why else? What else? Sorry? Sorry? You don't pray. Or don't pray enough. What else? You what? You read it, but you do not meditate on it. And this is not, oh, 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 that's not what the Bible means when it says meditate on the word both day and night. It means think over, conjure up in your mind, 
get a grasp of what it says. Yes, in other words, allow revelation to come. In other words, I encourage you, do not just read a, a chapter or uh, the whole Bible for the sake of reading the whole Bible. It would be better for you to get hold of a specific verse and let that sink in and produce a harvest than just reading it. and You've got an understanding, but it's never taken root. You want to produce a harvest, amen? And sometimes that means that one scripture verse will take a day. Sometimes it will take a month, maybe even a year for you to grab a hold of that. But then do that. What are the reasons that you do not know the word of God the way you wish you had? Come on, be honest. Let's go. More. There's lots more. You must read it in your language. Are you, are, you, are you hinting that we give you a Bible in your language? I've got one I'll give you. You've got three. Dash the one off, read it, and give the other two away. No, the English one. Is the full of oh, it's the English one. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> give the English one away. What are other reasons? Come. Associate with other Christians, okay. Who's the one that reveals deep, the deep secrets of God? The Holy Spirit, yes. And sometimes you will not, you'll read the thing and you will not understand it. And that's where you need to say, Holy Spirit, allow this to come alive that I understand what you're saying. I don't understand this. River. There's many times I've read, read and especially when it come, comes to when I shared on the mystery series, there was something I'd, you got in, and you need to help me quickly. I've got to share this, you know, I mean a week and then the next week a new revelation. That is not easy, hey? If you do not have the Holy Spirit revealing, you are going nowhere. You will sometimes look at this and it will make no sense. So that's very important. What else? What else? Yes. Yes. In other words, you need to have great equippers of the saints for the work of the ministry. In other words, great pastors and teachers. How many teachers nowadays teach things that you, when you listen, you know this is just not scriptural? Yet you'll still get people that will sow into those ministries. And I think, why do people do it? Yeah, that's very much the case. Yeah, a lot of people preach on things that don't understand themselves. That's true. What are the reasons? Why don't you know the scriptures as much as you wish you did at this present moment in time? Give me some other things. Don't spend time in the Word. Come, what other things? Here. Sorry? The challenges of life hem you in and all you do is you focus on that, the negative instead of what God is wanting to do in your spiritual walk. So you don't get up in the morning and read the word of God. You get up and read the news. Oh, sorry, look at the news. And you listen to the rubbish that they spew. And often it is propaganda. Be careful. Be very careful. You do not memorize the word of God. And I want to encourage you, memorize the word of God. That's why you will see that some people produce a crop that is a hundred times more than what yours is, and you think, how come? They paid the price. Okay. They paid the price in that area of their lives. You didn't. That's why they know more than you. RP can fix quite a few more things than I can because he spent a little bit more time in that, like decades more. And he's incredibly 
gifted in that, but he's also spent the time to acquire that knowledge. So if you want a great thing, a thing fixed properly, you go to him, not to me. He's better at it. But please don't go to him for teaching of the word. Rather come to me, okay? <laughs> I did spend a little bit more time than him in that. So there's a picture. There's a picture. And that's why God made us all different. And you have a gifting that I need, but I also have a gifting you need. That's why God wants us to be interdependent, okay? That we need one another. Make sure that your, the, heart, the soil of your heart is not rock hard like a pathway. Come in this place and say, Lord, I want to have a fertile soil that has been tilled, that has been bulldozed by you and eradicate all of the weeds, third one, all of the weeds out of, and any rocks, if there are any rocks, please take them out. I don't want any baggage in my life. So that when you speak, I can hear and grasp and it can produce a harvest that is pleasing to, your, to you. Because I don't want to even produce 30% or 60%. I want to produce 100% for you and your kingdom. I want to produce as much as I possibly can. Maybe even a thousand times more. There are some times you plant a seed and you will get way more than 100 times back. I pray that that will be the case with all of you. Sowing the same seed in different soils has different results, and we need to understand that. And the better it's tilled, better prepared, better taken care of, I guarantee you the better crop you'll get. Number six, sowing and harvesting are in proportion to the land area. Hello? One guy that has... Let's say you need 40 bags of, of uh, maize, okay, to live on. 40 bags of maize to live on. Uh, and, uh, for and for that, you need about one, one acre, sorry, two acres, which is about, one acre is about 0.4 of a hectare. So let's say you need 80 bags to live on, okay? Which is two acres. If you plant two acres, you'll get 40. Now, is that all you'll need, or will you need more than that? Why? For backup, okay. For what else? For? For expenses, what else? For? Waste, it would be nice if you can waste, hey. What else? Risk, uh, meaning what? If there's a crop failure and you get half of what you expect, how are you going to live if you need 80 bags? So you need not just double, because now if you need two acres, now you need double to live if you have risk. If, you, if it was half, you'd need double. If, you, if it crop failures, you'd need extra to pay the expenses, and then only would you break even and be able to live. And we need to understand this is a principle. And we need to look at our uh, situation and say, okay, this is what I need, but I, I actually need this much because of this and this and this, and then maybe I'll have that. So you'll have to rent this, pay that expenses, and half of that will come here, and then you've got enough. And I think this is a principle that many of us don't understand, is that the seed that, that we sow and har what we're going to harvest is in proportion to our land area. You cannot expect to, produ to harvest this when you've only planted this. If you never sow spiritually, you will never receive spiritually.
Many people think what they have is belongs to them. Because they are not stewards, they are owners. Who of you are stewards here and who of you are owners? If you, if you never ever tithe, if you never ever sow into God's kingdom, you're an owner. You own everything you have. You are not a steward. What God puts in your hand, you are a steward of it because actually it, when all is said and done, he owns it all. And you can only say yes if you do so and you do give into God's kingdom. If you don't, then you're the owner of all that God has given you. You do not see him as the true owner of your life. And you will never reap the reward that he wants to you to to be produced spiritually in your life. To make sure that if you want to harvest spiritually in that area of your life, you sow spiritually. If you want to harvest financially in this area of your life, you need to sow correctly in that area of your life. Because you cannot produce a lemon from orange. An orange produces an orange and a lemon produces a lemon. Number seven, sowing of seed causes us to expect 30, 60, or 100 fold return. When you plant whatever you're planting, or whether it be spiritual or physical, what do you want to produce? What do you want to harvest? What do you want to harvest? What, am, what amount do you want to harvest? 30, 60, or 100? Why? Your budget on the minimum, but your, exp but your desire is for the maximum. And you take care of it so that you can get the maximum. That's just w wisdom in the natural f sphere of things, is that you budget based on the smallest expectation, or return, should I say, but your expectation needs to be here. But you cannot have this expectation and only show in this much and take care of it this much. That is just lofty thinking. And many, 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 many people think like that. I cannot, I cannot invest this amount and expect w one day in four or five years' time to have the same returns as a, a, a field that has been spent a million rand on every year. It's just, it, do it doesn't make sense. Hello? Isn't that obvious? But to many people, that's not obvious. Listen to this. Psalms 126, 5 to 6, it says, Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. What does that mean? He who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves, with him. Let me tell you, I'm like this <coughs> financially. But one day, I will hopefully, with joy, be able to get a harvest from what I've sown. Do you understand? It costs tremendous amount of money to plant anything. On a larger scale. So much so that you think, how is it, am I going to get through this much? But at the end of the day, you will one day, and the scripture here is clear, those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. And I want to encourage you, those of you that sow into God and his kingdom, and you think, but how am I going to make it this month? God will take care of you. 
He will provide for you. He's never, ever not taken care of us. And I can say that because of that. And there's been numerous times where I've thought, I'm done for. Yet God somehow makes a way. And in all areas of our lives, He's taken care of us. Amen? But do you give Him thanks for that? Do you give Him the glory that is due His name? And I want to encourage you, do not eat the seed that God has placed in your hand. Many people, most of Africa, eat the seed that is placed in their hand. Instead of eating some, investing some, and giving some. That is the principle that we should all live by. And if you eat it all, expect no harvest. And sadly, we're seeing that in the church today. It's seldom are people sowing into God and His kingdom and we're seeing so little return. And that's why. Number eight. Sowing into soil that is not cultivated is clever. Ezekiel 36 verse 26 says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I pray and I hope that that will be all of your prayers. Say, Lord, come and soften the soil of my heart that I can produce a spiritual harvest that is fitting in your sight. I don't understand you. I don't understand why have you allowed this to happen in my life. I don't understand why I'm here at this present moment in time, but I choose, even so, I choose to hold on to you and love you and serve you. Would you come and remove the chaff and the misunderstandings of who you really are, would you come and eradicate that in, uh, in my life so that I can produce a harvest that is pleasing to your sight, that I can read your word and understand it, and that it can take root and produce a harvest out there, that I can have the impact that I should have. Would you do that? Are you willing to do that? I pray that all of you would go home and that you will say, right, Lord, financially, this is where I'm at. I want to be there. How do you want me to get to there? What do I need to sow to get me there? And you ask him for the strategy. What are the protective mechanisms? How are you to till the soil? Et cetera, et cetera. And then you go jump to your family. I want my family to be like this. How am I going to get there? And you put a strategy in place with the Holy Spirit advising and counseling you. Then you go to your spiritual side of things and you say, Lord, I don't know you the way I yearn and desire to know you. Would you show me how to get to the point of knowing you intimately? Would you show me how I need to, what I need to do and put in place to get there? What are some protective mechanisms that I need to put in place? Switch off the TV, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, X, what are all these things. Get up at five in the morning, four in the morning, whatever the case may be. Whatever you need to do, you ask him and he'll show you. Because I cannot work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That's not my calling. It's not my responsibility. God absolves me from that. My calling is to equip you, to teach you, and be faithful to that. But your responsibility is to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Not with laxidaisy, akomasi, komasaya. And this is the tragedy in the church, and that's why we're not where we want to be, because we komasi, komasaya. So would you go before God today and say, Lord, I want this changed in my spiritual walk. What are the strategies? And in any area of your life, 
that you are wanting to produ- receive a harvest or get a harvest, how am I going to get that harvest? Because you will never ever get the harvest you want unless there's first a seed planted. And that seed needs to be planted in the correct soil. And if it's not in the correct soil and nurtured, it will not produce this. Do you know that the Bible says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. What does it say? He who? Not he's given. He who finds. In other words, the man has to open his eyes and find her. If the woman is never available, guess what? She'll never be found. I don't even know if you know what I'm saying. But th- these are principles that we don't understand and realize. There's, and there are, these principles are in all areas of life. I know with my kids, sometimes they say, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to do so well this term. And, and I say, oh, yes, what are you going to do? Oh, no, I'm going to study this and this and this. Awesome intentions, but in reality, do you think they study? No. So do they get what they want? No. They get way more than what they should. But that's just because they're blessed. I don't know if they thank God for that. Hello, Levi. I can see you hiding there. <laughs> Do you understand uh, what I'm saying? Is so many of the so much of the time we have these great intentions, but we do nothing about planting the seed that will produce the harvest that we want. That the intention can be a reality. So would you go today and say, Lord, financially? Whatever, business-wise, my family-wise, spiritually-wise, wife-wise or husband-wise. Hello? I adore my wife, but I invest some time into that woman. Hello? If you never see your wife, and I work hard, you can ask my kids. Most of the time, I'm in my office. If you want to see me from... After my quiet time, three, it's like sometimes anything from 3 to 10 o'clock at night, you'll find me in my office. But I still, when my wife says, I want this, or I will start drop everything, and then she has my focus. There are other times where it's too busy, then obviously, but most of the time, she, I want coffee, she's got it. I want this, she's got it. She sent me a WhatsApp the other day, a great husband is a great coffee maker, something like that. I thought, yeah, that's so true with me. But I'm not a good cook, so I never cook her anything because she won't eat it, I'm sure. <laughs> but my encouragement to you, to, to you is, I know all of you here want to want to reap a harvest in many different areas of your life, but you cannot unless you sow the seed, and you cannot... Un- Reap this unless you sow it in good soil and take care of it. Those are principles that will never change. It's like the law of gravity. Okay? So would you go before God and say, Lord, show me. I want to I be here in this area of my life, in my whatever, in my business, in my... I want to be there. What do, you, how, what do you need to put in place to get there? That is, the, that is the, what God is saying. But remember, the most important is your relationship with Him. If you want to be intimate with Him and know His voice, if you want to know what are the signs of the days that we're living in, you better make sure that you spend time with Him. Plant the seeds every day of your life. Because eventually, you'll reap the reward. Never invest. You'll never harvest.